Well, welcome one and all to our second virtual worship experience at St. Mark's on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks too to the 80 or so who participated last week and for the feedback that you sent us. We've done our best to incorporate some of your suggestions. Worship remains a wonderful way in which God connects us socially even as we remain separate physically. God is one who unites us in praise and in thanksgiving. Again, on your behalf, I wish to thank very much our Canon Bob Schroeder and Alison Clark for assisting with the liturgy and Dan Walker for his wizardry with the camcorder and editing software. Please feel free to let us know how this worship experience works for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are yeah. truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. All that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them, and there were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will have sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, 
and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the fifth Sunday of Lent is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning. More than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A man named Lazarus, who lived in Bethany, became sick. Bethany was the town where Mary and her sister Martha lived. This Mary was the one who poured the perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was sick. The sisters sent Jesus the message. Lord, your dear friend is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, the final result of this sickness will not be the death of Lazarus, this has happened in order to bring glory to God, and it will be the means by which the Son of God will receive glory. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he received the news that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Teacher, just a short time ago the people there wanted to stone you, and are you planning to go back? A day has twelve hours, doesn't it? So those who walk in broad daylight do not stumble, for they see the light of this world. But if they walk during the night, they stumble, because they have no light. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go and wake him up. If he is asleep, Lord, he will get well. Jesus meant that Lazarus had died. But they thought he meant natural sleep, so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. But for your sake, I am glad that I was not with him. 
so that you will believe. Let us go to him. Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us all go along with the teacher, so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been buried four days before. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Judeans had come to see Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. If you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask him for. Your brother will rise to life. I know that he will rise to life on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even though they die. And those who live and believe in me will never die. Do you believe this? I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After Martha said this, she went back and called her sister Mary privately. The teacher is here and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up and hurried out to meet him. Jesus had not yet arrived in the village but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The people who were in the house with Mary, comforting her, followed her when they saw her get up and hurry out. They thought that she was going to the grave to weep there. Mary arrived where Jesus was, and as soon as she saw him, she fell at his feet. Jesus saw her weeping, and he saw how the people with her were weeping also. His heart was touched, and he was deeply moved. Where have you buried him? Come and see, Lord. Jesus wept. See how much he loved him, the people said. But some of them said, He gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Deeply moved once more, Jesus went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone placed at the entrance. Take the stone away. There will be a bad smell, Lord. He has been buried four days. Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? They took the stone away. Jesus looked up. I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me. But I say this for the sake of the people here, so that they will believe that you sent me. After he had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, 
Come out! He came out. His hands and feet wrapped in grave clothes. And with a cloth round his face. Untie him and let him go. Many of the people who had come to visit Mary saw what Jesus did, and they believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Liminal. I wonder if it's a word that you've heard before. In that sense, it's a bit like the word pandemic. I wonder how many times the word pandemic had rolled off your tongues prior to 2020. Liminal is a word I'm hearing used more often these days. Scott Stoner, in a recent post, stated we are living in liminal time. Now, the word liminal derives from the Latin word limit, meaning limit or threshold. Richard Raw talks about liminal time in this way. It's when you have left or about to leave the tried and true, but have not yet been able to replace it with anything else. It's when you are between your old comfort zone and any possible new answer. If you're not trained in how to hold anxiety, how to live with ambiguity, how to entrust and wait, Raw says, you will run. Anything to flee this terrible cloud of unknowing. Kind of like the trapeze artist in midair who has let go one bar and is, being wait is waiting to be grabbed by the artist swinging from the other. That's liminal time. Now many of us will have experienced liminal time before on a personal level, even if we didn't have a name for it. The passing of a loved one the loss of a job, a health crisis, maybe retirement. Liminal time is when nothing seems quite the same anymore. And we've no idea what our new normal is going to look like. Everything seems up in the air. That's what we call liminal time. Now, what makes the COVID-19 pandemic different for us is that the entire planet is going through liminal time together at the same time. We are all in limbo. Sure, some are doing it way harder than others. At the same time, there are billions of us facing similar challenges at the very same time. That's something novel, at least in my own lifetime. Now, I imagine Lazarus, dead as a doornail in that stone-cold tomb, was also in liminal time. He was no longer alive, but he was not going to stay dead. Lazarus, too, was in limbo. Only he doesn't stay in limbo, does he? Something extraordinary happens. As you saw in the video, Jesus intervenes in a spectacular way. Lazarus, come out, Jesus bellows, and Lazarus, still wrapped in grave cloth, emerges. Unbind him, Jesus commands, and let him go. Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, is the one who continues to cry out to us in liminal time, always calling you and me to new life in whatever is happening. As a global family, we are living 
in liminal time. A time of unknowing with all its anxiety and frustration and despair. And it's in this liminal time that the gospel story we saw this morning puts a question to us. And that question is, where is Jesus calling forth new life in us? I imagine that most of us, in listening to the story, would prefer to be with Martha, out there in the Palestinian sunshine, looking after a household, receiving neighbours and friends in mourning, interacting freely with Jesus. In other words, in charge of our lives. Only in this liminal time, we may become more aware of those parts of ourselves which resonate with Lazarus in the cave. Those parts of ourselves where we remain imprisoned by our past, fixated on what we've done and what has been done to us. Those parts of ourselves which we isolate from other people, often from those closest to us, fearing what others will think if they really know who we are. Those parts of ourselves which may be actually deteriorating, bodies or minds that are simply wearing out, and we're struggling with it. This Lent, of all Lents, is a liminal time when we ask God to show us those areas in our lives where we too may remain trapped or isolated or in decline. This Lent is a liminal time when we ask ourselves in the midst of a pandemic Where is Jesus longing to call forth new life in us? This morning's readings remind us of our powerlessness to solve the human dilemmas of sin and death. Yet it is into precisely this situation, into this liminal space that we find ourselves in, that Jesus the one who holds sway over our brokenness and our mortality, says to each one of us, you will rise again. Now come out, unbind her, unbind him, and let them go. In this liminal time, please remember that the God we love and worship is the author of life. Life in all its fullness. This morning, Jesus commands Lazarus to step out of his liminal time to receive the gift of life. In whatever we are living, however we find ourselves responding to these unprecedented times, know, know, know in your hearts that our risen Saviour is still speaking to us. Words of comfort, healing, and peace. Words that truly bring us life. Please, make time to listen to those words. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Ibadan in Nigeria. We also pray for Justin of Canterbury. 
In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Ecclesiastical Province of Canada, praying for Anne, our Metropolitan, Mark, our Indigenous Bishop, and Linda, our Primate. In the Diocese of Huron, we pray for Todd, our Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. We pray also for the clergy and people of St. George's Forest Hill and St. John the Evangelist, both in Kitchener. In our deanery, we pray for Father Bill Graham and the people of Trinity Waterford. We pray for Archdeacon Father Tim. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those in need. Comfort those who mourn. Encourage the faith, the fearful, and tend the sick. Bring rest to all those who seek treatments and diagnoses and are left without answers or energy. Restore the aching souls and bodies of those who seek comfort. And this week we pray especially for Ernestine, Elsie, Daryl, and Amber, family, and their unborn child, Carol, Owen, and family, Faye, Anne, Andrew, Nathan, and family, Barb, Daryl, Joy, Jenna, Carol, Mark, Bud, Natalie, Jordan, Brock, Jack, Roger, Patricia, Jason, Charlie, Elaine, Doreen, as well, Elizabeth, Rob, Zelda, Melissa and family, Wayne and Claude and Carol, Stephanie, Marie, Gord, Vicki, Jason, Peter and Don and family. And let us pray for those suffering with COVID-19, the ill, their family and their friends. As well for all who are on the front lines, medical workers, first responders. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whatever danger threatens and your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe, comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. And gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick at this time, for your wisdom to those searching for a cure, strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the departed God of living water. We thank you for those who are endure, endured suffering and who are now boast in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation. Giving thanks for the life and witness of Marjorie's story. We pray for Ralph and Jane and their extended family in the time of grief. And we give thanks for the life and witness of Bill Anscombe, and we pray for his family and for Janet during this time of grief as well. And for the life and witness of Peter Blizzico, we pray for Betty and his family during the time of grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for the Christian community in this anxious and unknown time as we face COVID-19 as a global community. Praying for the Christian community as well, Lord, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer and the collect for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us from all sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, how it be your your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and grant us peace. Amen. Amen.